I don't know. Well, weird. anyway, we're here to talk about Brian Danielson and Eddie Kingston. And uh, I feel like if you want to hear me talk about how Brian Danielson is the greatest wrestler in the world, you can listen to, like, one or two shows, and any one or two shows from the year 2023. I'm sure I talked about it at length. At some point, it must get boring. So, listen, he's the best. You got it? He's the best. But I want to talk about Eddie Kingston for a little bit. I was watching this awesome. I thought awesome you were talking about Eddie because he's the fucking best. Well, he's also the best in a different way. I was watching Eddie, and I was trying to think of a guy doing the everyman gimmick. He's, he says he's always the underdog gimmick who ha- has that gimmick but then works a completely technical style. He's not the Sandman or Tommy Dreamer or Hacksaw Doug where he just gets in there and punches guys. He has done some Wee Tai training. He suplexes guys like someone who spent a lot of time suplexing dummies. He's not just a drunken bar fighter. And I didn't see enough like Hashimoto when he was a star. I don't know if he counts just because he was fat. If he was the, always like an underdog before he became a main eventer. I guess Dusty Rose did a little bit of boxing with some shuffling footwork and stuff. But he's like unique. I don't remember a guy doing th- this in-ring style with this out-of-ring character and making it work like this. He's, he's quite great. The match just rules, all right? It just does. Uh, Daniels is working him over with kicks and knees and taunting him, saying, all oh, these fans are saying you're a bum, which is a dirt lie, a blatant lie. Most of these fans did not think that he was a bum. They were chanting, in fact, he's no bum, or something like that. So we get two commercial breaks in this one as well. Uh, Eddie reverses the back superplex at the top rope. Danielson sells his eye because Eddie lands on his face. But Danielson is still, you know, the best. He's working him over and he gets his knee strike. Eddie kicks out of that. But Danielson is still confident. Lots of elbows, lots of stomps. They even tease a ref stoppage, but Eddie refuses to give up by holding his one middle finger in the air. In the air. And this fires Danielson up. And he goes to the corner. He's going to come out for the big knee strike again. And even Brian Danielson shouts, fuck you, as he charges out. But he charges right into a back fist. And they trade big moves for a while. And Eddie hits a pair of back fists. And he grabs him for a power bomb. And I didn't appreciate this live, but I watched it when they showed the replay. This power bomb was not picture perfect. Their timing was slightly off. It was a bit of a struggle for Eddie to get him up there. But he got him up there, and he slammed him down. And the struggle made it like, even better because it's an ugly fight. And he power bombs this dude, and he pins him. Eddie Kingston has won the Blue League. I hope you all enjoyed your pay-per-view main event here for free on Dynamite. Uh, there is a good chance that this will be a better match than anything on the pay-per-view. And I hope I'm wrong because that means I get to watch more great wrestling on Saturday night. But uh, this was awesome. I demand you all go see it right now. Well, did you think it was the best match of the entire tournament? I would have to go back and check. I did think it was better than the opener. I it's it's virtually impossible to. Uh, th- this tournament, you know, whatever you want to say about the tournament, or AEW, or whatever, the tournament was great. Oh, yes. And uh, this was there a was fucking... No, yes? There was no downside to this tournament. There's nitpicks, there's things to improve on, but there's nothing wrong with the tournament at all. Nothing bad about the tournament at all. No. And uh, it's glaringly obvious watching this tournament what uh, what Tony Khan's strength is as a as a booker, and that is uh, unsurprisingly putting awesome fucking guys in the ring together, having yeah. them do matches, and that's what this tournament was. And it was very well booked. I disagreed with the three way, but I mean, you could have done whatever. But it was it was an excellently booked tournament. The matches were awesome. This match was fantastic. I, I knew Eddie was going to the finals. I'm still telling you, Eddie's beaten Moxley on Saturday. It's got to be the uh, the finish. And this promo between Eddie and Moxley afterwards was one of the best fucking promos of the entire year to set up a big match between two guys. I mean, Moxley was just like, he was so great. And then Eddie just grabs, I don't think Moxley legit was finished. Oh, he was not done, And no Eddie way, grabs no that goddamn mic away from him, and then he fucking cuts a promo on him. And it was a thing of absolute beauty. I cannot wait for that match. It was awesome. They, they've had, you know, they've been frenemies for years now, and uh, here they are, they're going to fight again. I'm fine with that. Uh, yeah, I, I also think the booking here is awesome, because to win this tournament, Eddie is basically going to have to sweep the Blackpool Combat Club. Because he had to beat Claudio to stay alive. He had to beat Danielson here in the finals, in the Blue League finals. Now he'll have to beat Moxley in the final finals 
And uh, as he notes, I'm going to bust you up. I'm going to enjoy it. That's my outline, Topher. And they play his music. And here yep. was the point. And part of it, too, I, I stopped to eat uh, lunch in the middle of this. But uh, I came back and thought, man, this is a great show. There's still a half hour to go. What in the hell are they going to do to top this? And the answer was nothing. But they tried. Well, the whole promo was Moxley telling him, but all I'd ever asked from you, I stuck my neck out for you, I fought by your side, all I asked was 100%. And for a guy who's angry at the whole world, you sure do have a lot of people that love you. Everybody here in Orlando loves Eddie Kingston. People all over the world love you. They don't care whether you win or lose, but they deserve 100%. The problem is, I know you better than you know yourself. I know you can't beat me. You know you can't beat me. So for my money, you've already lost. You've already given up. You're already making excuses. But that's not going to fly this time. A few years ago, I gave you a shot of a lifetime, but I let you off the hook. I let you go off on your shield. If you want to be the triple crown champion, you're going to have to earn every inch. And he's going to say more, but Eddie grabs a mic and he says... Don't treat me like your young boy, bitch, Yuta. I'm not a young boy. I'm your senpai. I broke in before you, and you're lucky I let you breathe. But I'll tell you something. You're right. I hate myself more than anybody else, but on Saturday, the king of the bums is going to push you. You told me one time when I wanted to quit AEW, you're not allowed to quit. We need guys like you around. So I'm going to give you everything I have. Show me your fighting spirit, because I'm going to show you mine. And, fuck, he cut the line about it's his out music, and Moxie fucking starts laughing. I was just like, this is the best. This is the fucking best! Yeah, yeah. So Lexi and Christian are still waiting for Adam, like a half hour later. We go to break, we come back. This was such a sharp divide between one AEW and a totally different AEW from that point forward. Yes. So... Christian is still outraged. He's starting to lose his temper now. And then Adam Copeland just runs in and starts brawling with him. Well, this is not what was agreed to. Adam Copeland is, in fact, unprofessional. So they're having this brawl. They're brawling up in the, ha- the hallways. The, uh, there's like a dozen geeks out there trying to separate them, including Brian Keith. And I did note here, the Von Erics were among the geeks trying to separate them. So there's a great point in the end. And I'm not sure great's the exactly the right word. But uh, Adam has got Christian by the hair. And he rears back to throw a punch with his right hand. And like eight guys tackle him around the waist. Not one of them grabs his arm. So he's left just frozen in midair with this punch he's not going to throw. And eventually he doesn't do it. And they pull him away. And that's that. They're having an ODQ match. Yippee. Chris Tatlander versus Sky Blue. Listen, they had a good wrestling match. Chris Tatlander, Sky Blue, if you're listening, excellent work. You did the best you could under the situation, under the circumstances, and you did a fine job doing the job assigned to you. Why did this match with two women who are not in the pay-per-view get like 15 minutes? They're out there. Bro, it's not even that. Well, yeah, go for this match, and then I'll, I'll get into my rant. The thong that Sky Blue was wrestling in on Rampage or Collision, whichever it was, it's gone. She's back to, by her standards, conservative wrestling gear again. Stokely is out there doing comedy because every AEW match has to have a comedy commentator, all of them. And even there's wacky jokes here about Willow, the most over woman on the roster, who's not in this match, not on the pay-per-view. And uh, there's all this yucking up going on. Even Shivani's like, there's a hell of a match going on here, guys. We should maybe try calling some wrestling moves. So eventually, Sky distracts the ref. Julia Hart appears, clobbers Chris, and Sky wins with an avalanche code blue that looked all sorts of painful. Very, very bad. And then they go for a beatdown, and Willow saves, and the, the match was good, and the post-match was good because everyone loves Willow, but why did this get so much more time than Riho and Tony Storm? And then, oh, by the way, there's more. Oh, my God. Bro, listen. So, first off, this this segment here, it was like, you could not have, I mean, this was like a parody of AEW where... Okay, we're going to do an absolutely fantastic match. We're going to do an absolutely fantastic promo. And then it's 9.30, and we're going to put a women's match out there. And it died. I mean, it died. They got into Statlander a little bit there. She's making her comeback. But, I mean, this was just... This was it just... And then Abaddon's out there being all spooky and all wacky. And I'm like, oh, my God. And then they go to this interview. It's Renee interviewing Soraya and Ruby. 
And Ruby can't even answer the question. And Saray starts talking. Says, I got a gift for you. It is Harley. Okay. <laughs> formerly of QTV. And she's out there. And she's got, you know, her uh, her uh, uh, breasts, you know, all over the place. They were. They and, were. And Saray goes, you know, she's really good with her hands. And Ruby says, yeah, I've heard. And then, to show she's good with her hands, Harley pulls out a giant fucking knife. Excuse me. A yes. knife, you say? Like a kitchen a knife. A giant fucking a carving knife. And she's waving knife. it around. And... I'm like, what in the fuck am I watching here? And I look at the clock, and it's like, it's 9.55, okay? And you know what I'm watching on? YouTube TV. Oh, at, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. At 12.20. Yeah. And I'm like, son of a bitch, you got to be fucking kidding me. You've got to be fucking kidding me. So we go to the main event segment, and it's supposed to be MJF and Samoa Joe versus the Devil's Henchmen for the Ring of Honor Tag Team titles. So, of course, the henchmen come out. And, uh, you know, Tony Schiavone goes, uh, you know, we're going to go past the top of the hour if we need to. <laughs> like, there's 30 <laughs> seconds left, and we're having a Ring of Honor World Tag. You think we might go past it? Well, okay, all right, whatever. So they, they uh, Max comes out, and then he looks in the back, and, oh, it's Samoa Joe. He's down, and he's hurt, and, uh, and the recording ends. <laughs> I'm like... Son of a bitch. Well, do you need me to fill you in here? Well, no, because, uh, you know, I am a professional. Okay, I'm like Adam. And, uh, you know, I did go to YouTube, and they and they put it up there. And, you know, again, if, if they're happy that I watched the last, you know, several minutes on, on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I seem to have lost you. All right, they're overrun. They're overrun. Grew by twenty thousand people. Okay, should have grown by a lot more, but didn't because everybody with YouTube TV, everybody with Direct TV, same story I've told a thousand times. They didn't get the overrun because it doesn't happen with AEW. But anyway, I went to YouTube and I I was watching it, and they go they go five minutes past the top of the hour. And again, what's the point of a fucking overrun? Well, the point of the overrun is to greatly grow the audience for the last segment because you're also catching all the people that are tuning in for the next show, right? Well, it's not happening. <laughs> they came 20,000 people. Uh, out of, out of 850,000 or whatever, they gained 20,000. Whoop-de-doo, okay? So anyway, uh, I was pissed by this point. I'm, I'm pretty much furious. And then I think back, it's like, you know this show could have largely gone off the air on time? If you hadn't done that stupid segment with Soraya and Ruby and the fucking knife and Harley, whatever the hell her name is, I'm just like, fuck, we had to air all that shit so that we could go over for the main event segment, which, goddamn, I had to search for it and that's what I got? A fucking, basically a squash match. Yes. After all that time with MJF defending the titles against... Everybody on his own. He'd get this partner. He got that partner. He was doing it for Adam Cole. This thing had been going on for what four months now. Well, he goes in there against two masked geeks, who he's beaten their ass by the way, one on two, and then another geek comes out, hits him with a pipe, and he's immediately hit with a heat seeker and he's pinned. Yeah. And we have new mystery Ring of Honor tag team champions. And then the devil appears on the screen and says, "Pleasure doing business with you." And then Joe turns on. MJF, he's, turns out he's all right. And, uh, man, this was a straight-up WWE, and not a good WWE angle. No. I don't mind when you do a WWE angle and it's it's good. That's fine. But when you do a WWE angle, and it feels like a Vince McMahon WWE angle, and it was on the same show where we saw the first 90 minutes of incredible wrestling and awesome matches and great payoffs and great promos, and then on top of that, I had to go to YouTube to watch it because it fucking went over the top of the hour and YouTube TV didn't... Re I was just... I was done! Hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.